Howdy, leadership scholars. Welcome to ALEC 618, Leading Teams. I am so glad that you found the first lecture. So yay, that's a first win. I'm so glad that you decided to take this course and I'm really glad to be on this journey with you. And it is a journey, right? As the old adage says, there is no I in team. And so how do we learn to not only work better in that kind of arena, but how do we use our leadership skills to really facilitate a good experience and a productive experience and a successful experience for everyone? So that is honestly my objective for this course. We'll get into course objectives here in a sec. But as someone who has three degrees in leadership, you can imagine how many group projects I've been a part of, right? And it doesn't matter what your next step in life is going to be, there will be teams involved. So for you guys that are PhD students looking to go into academia, right, you're going to trans transition into work group teams or maybe grant teams or lab teams. Teams just don't go away. But if your experience is anything like mine, it looks like this from the hangover, right? 99% of, well, one person usually does 99% of the work or at least 80% of the work, the 80-20 rule, right? One person in the team has no idea what's going on the whole time. You're just like, yo, yo, check back in, right? One person says he's gonna help. They seem super eager, but they always fall out. We're gonna learn the academic term for those guys as we go along in the semester. And then you have that one guy that is there in the beginning and then just disappears. But then they swoop in at the last minute and they claim all of the credit, right? This is pretty indicative of what you might have experienced as a student or in the workplace, because it's kind of similar in that too. So my um, objective for this course is for you to learn how to lead a team toward success and not toward what usually happens when there's one person or two people doing the majority of the work and there's a lot of conflict and strife and you know you think about working in a team versus working by yourself if that gives you stomach pains we're going to help that right we're going to I'm going to give you the tools for your toolbox to help you through that process so let's talk about this class a little bit now, it has been a while since I have taught this class. Um, I proposed this, oh goodness, holy moly. I wanna say back in 2017. Um, and then I had some life events happen and the class just, I just didn't, I ran out of room um, to be able to offer it. And so I'm so glad that we have started it back into the rotation and it is going to be um, something that's gonna be a little bit more regular now, which is awesome. So the reason why I kind of give you that preamble is looking at some of these objectives, I know a lot of you are not ag majors. And so you may be like, mm, maybe I should Q drop this class or withdraw on this first day and with no penalty. Hold on for a sec. Let me explain this as we go along. So team development is huge. When I have studied teams, there's lots of different team development models out there. My favorite is Tuckman, and we're gonna spend your next lecture actually talking all about Tuckman. And it rhymes, so that's easy, right? Forming, storming, norming, performing, and adjourning. And so that is going to be kind of our base and our backbone for the whole entire course, is how do we actually learn and dig into those things a little bit more and utilize team development. The article that I had you read to go along with this intro is actually one of the examples of why this is so important. So this was actually a master student thesis at the University of Georgia, and Natalie looked at what can we do actually to really help students engage in group and team projects in the classroom better. And she utilized Tuckman as her conceptual framework. And the reason why, again, I included it is because I want you to see that this works and it's worth it, right? So we're also gonna talk about group member roles. Um, for those that have had leadership classes in, before, you may 
think about this in terms of task and relationship orientation. There's some personality stuff that comes into it, but we know that one of the hardest things about working in teams is that we are all very different humans, right? And we all have different baggage that we carry into this relationship of a team. And some of us have carry on luggage and some of us pay an extra 60 bucks um, for a couple of add-ons, right? So when we are trying to figure that out, understanding everyone's role naturally maybe, and then also what is the role we need them to play on the team, that helps in conflict, it helps in dynamics, it helps in making sure that we get the right people on the right seat on the right bus if you want to hang out with Jim Collins and talk about good to great. Um, the next one, analyze and integrate research on team dynamics. Now, it says in agricultural organizations. All right, we haven't known each other a long time, some of us, but I'm just gonna kind of be super honest and transparent with you. Trying to get a course approved at Texas A&M, it is, um, well, it's hard. And when you stick the word leadership in there, whoo boy, you just stir that rat's nest because everyone thinks they own leadership, right? Business thinks they own leadership. The College of Ag thinks they own leadership. Health kinesiology think they own leadership. Arts and sciences believe they own leadership. Poli sci, good Lord, the Bush School, right? Here's the thing. My philosophy is nobody owns leadership. Leadership is contextual. And that could be from one situation to the other, one discipline to the other. It's all about context. And because we come from varied backgrounds and what we want to do after this class is so different, contextualization is going to be a huge part of what you do on your own. So our readings, our lectures, they're going to have some ag examples, but they're not just ag. Now, those that are in the College of Ag, you've heard this before, that my view of the College of Ag is food, fiber, and people. And man, if just about everything in the world doesn't fall into one of those categories, right? So it's super broad, um, but that could be because I have three degrees from land-grant institutions. Um, but it's that idea of what does this mean to you? We had to make sure to put agricultural organizations in there so that no one would try to throw roadblocks in when we tried to approve this class. But it is very different from what they teach at Mays. It's very different from what they teach over in EDAD and EHRD. And very different from the Bush School. And it's because I know all the guys and girls that teach those classes. And we've had conversations about how can we all have room and space to do what we need to do and not have to step on people's toes. But when you get, you know, administrators involved, it always kind of mucks it up. So that's why the word ag is in there a lot. So the last thing, facilitate and evaluate strategic team performance. And so how do we then evaluate teams in the best way? So we're talking about the integration of research into practice, and then how do we evaluate those things? So those are our course objectives. All right, I probably should have put this one first, shouldn't I have? Who is this disembodied voice that you're hearing? Uh, my name is Jennifer Strong. I am actually Fighting Texas Aggie class of 02, whoop. And I got to come back to the mothership. And I've been at Texas A&M post PhD now for, oh, a long time. So it's 2010, which is crazy. Um, I first, actually, I'll, I'll kind of start at a different place than I usually do. I took my first class on team development from the woman in the top right hand picture. Um, this is Chris Townsend, her husband, Joe. Uh, we lost Joe a few years ago to uh, cancer. It's a sucky disease. Um, Chris is my mentor, my mom, my big sister, one of my besties, kind of all rolled into one. She is the reason why I'm here. She's amazing. And she installed this passion of mine for how do we work better together, right? Because it's always better when we're together. Jack Johnson was right. So this Chris and Joe, they're kind of my parental figures, love them to death. Going, I guess now counterclockwise, those two crazy mutts up in the top corner are Khaleesi and Thor. Khaleesi's the little one, Thor's the big one. And the reason why I put my dogs on there, yes, they do run the house. I just pay the bills. But um, more importantly, because I am taping this at home, 
they're probably going to make a camo cameo. So when you hear dogs going crazy, that means uh, I've got an Amazon package or someone has decided to walk around the neighborhood and they didn't ask Thor his permission. So I'm sorry in advance for dog barking. Um, then keeping going around the horn, I have an amazing daughter. Her name is Brenna. Brenna is actually class of 2027. Ah! It's so crazy. Um, it's crazy to think that I'm going to be a parent of a freshman in a few months. Um, actually, if you ask her, it's now. Uh, she's been to a new student conference, so it's legit. I'm very excited. She is majoring actually in ag leadership with a minor in psychology, although they don't call it that anymore. It's psychology and brain science. Thinking about either law school or being a counselor. So super proud of this girl. She is amazing. Um, my son, his name's Cooper. Um, it, this was part of that life thing I was telling you about earlier. So we uh, lost Cooper in 2017. He was actually killed in a car wreck. Um, I've got great Cooper stories as we go through too. Um, I still have Cooper days, um, but the cool thing about this tragedy um, is that it has allowed me to be really transparent when it comes to mental health. Um, and I want to say this now, I know you guys are working adults, right? Whether you are working a part-time job, whether you are full-time and taking this class, you know, in the, in the evenings, um, whatever your life looks like, I know that this is not the only thing you're doing, right? And I know that we all struggle. I love that this last gener latest generation in college, our Gen Zers, have opened up that dialogue. And I want you to feel like even as a graduate student, you have that dialogue with me. So when it comes to assignments, when it comes to anything, if you feel yourself falling behind, if you're having a day, if you just can't get clarity, because I have those days too, y'all, where I just it, I'm just in a fog, then let me know. I am. I will not judge you. Um, I will try to help you as much as I can. And if you let me know before there's a crisis or before there's a due date or before you get too far behind, I can help you through that. We can change due dates. We can do whatever we can to help you through that. So Cooper was uh, mine to rent from the big man for eight and a half years. And he still is that guiding light for me um, of showing people love and grace. And I think that's why we're here, right? And if we can't talk about that in the context of teams, then really, where can we talk about it? Speaking of teams, um, you may also be in a possession of one of these, a significant other. Um, the last picture there, not the dog, is my sweet husband, uh, Robert Strong. Some of you may have had classes with him before. He's also a professor in ALEC. He works on diffusion of innovations and he's a research guy. He loves stats. I don't. He does. So I'm glad somebody does. Um, he is ridiculously smart, very handsome. I'm a lucky woman. Um, he is actually headed to Europe on his sabbatical in the fall. So it's very cool to see him prepare for that uh, neat experience. One of the cool perks of being a faculty member. So that's me. As we go along, I tell stories, y'all. This is my teaching, I guess, method. My favorite teaching method, especially for a online course where I'm just a talking, well, I'm not even talking head, um, where I'm just a voice. Um, I had a student in my last last year's summer graduate class, which is very cool if you're around next year. It is organizational culture and ethics. We're doing an every other year thing. And she said, Dr. Jen, I wish you'd turn your camera on so we can see you. And I was like, girl, nobody wants to see this. It's summer. I got no makeup on, hair in a ponytail, and in a tank top. Like, ain't nobody want to look at that. Um, but I'm excited to be, again, on this journey with you. So kind of going through the syllabus, um, first thing first, right, uh, the APA manual. So I know some of you are not from the world of social sciences, um, got a couple of hard bench sciences, scientists with us. Um, so this may be a little bit a different way to cite for you, but we use the APA. So the APA 7th uh, edition style manual is how you need to cite your assignments. 
Um, and we can talk a little bit more about that. If it freaks you out, um, let me know and I can uh, point you to some really cool resources. Um, the APA manual, if you are a social scientist, I'm sure you already have it. Um, but if not, APA.org is a heck of a great place to start. Don't use that Purdue Al mess. Um, they, they got some stuff wrong up there, y'all. So um, go straight to the source. And then what I have done instead of a book, because I know you guys are poor graduate students. I know it's been a hot minute since I've been a grad student, but I still remember those days. So I have given you one journal article per topic. Um, any more than that in the summer is just, I don't know, just mean. Um, and I think it's kind of fun because they are a mix of practice and research. So if, you know, numbers are not your thing, we've got some qualitative pieces. If that's not the trajectory of your career. We've got some cool stuff from Harvard Business Review and Fast Company and some other magazines that are very much practice-based. So it's a really cool assortment, or I think it is, of um, how can we take these kind of theoretical things and put them into truly practice. So talking about course structure, and I know this is important for you guys, what I've done and you, if you haven't jumped on Canvas yet, if you're accessing this through that email that I sent, um, what I have done is break it, broke down, I guess, kind of week slash modules. So 5.5 since our first week is, you know, two whole days um, of what that looks like. So our intro and our Tuckman stuff is going to be this week. Next week is forming, then storming, norming, performing, and adjourning. And you can always work ahead, but you cannot fall behind. So what I kind of in my head pictured is that you might treat this as like a Monday, Wednesday, Friday type of experience, right? So Monday you listen because every module has three topics underneath that module. So you may listen to the PowerPoint and take notes with the power with the actual PowerPoint slides and read the article, right? One day, kind of let yourself digest and then pick it up the next day. Now you do not obviously have to do that. You're an adult, you get to choose. Um, but in my head, I like a little structure. I gotta have a little structure. I'm not a self-directed learner. So that works for me. So if you get, if you know you're going on vacation in a few weeks, then you can work ahead, right? You can cram a bunch all together, get those assignments in and you don't have to worry about it. You only have to worry if you miss an assignment. So those due dates are there for people like me who need them. So you're not just waiting till the end of our very short time together and just trying to cram everything because it's, it's just too much. Now, I have worked really hard to take a 15 week course, which is how I used to teach this class and put it into five weeks. Um, but along the way, y'all, if it just is too much, let me know if you're like, Dr. Jen, your lecture was like an hour and a half. You need to tone that mess down. That's fine. I'm open to suggestions. You are my guinea pigs. Okay. Um, most of your assignments, I'm looking at my notes. Most of your assignments are going to be due on Mondays at 5 PM. Okay. That's probably different than most of your online classes. I do that for a couple of reasons. One canvas inevitably shuts down and does stupid stuff, right? You guys have probably in your, been in your programs long enough to know that Canvas, although better than eCampus and any of the rest we've had, e-learning and all that mess, it still has glitches. And so if your assignment isn't due until midnight, I can't help you. Y'all, I'm asleep because um, I'm old. And IT can't help you because they, in the summer, don't really keep those kind of late hours. So that's why everything is due at five o'clock. In case there is a problem, you can troubleshoot with IT, you can troubleshoot with me. We can try to figure out what's going on, okay? Now that's, all of them are due at Monday except for your last one, which is due the last day of class. But hey, let's talk about this. What is this? What are the assignments in this class? So the first thing that you have due is actually due on Monday. And I know that's really fast, but it's really easy. It's 50 points, don't worry. You are going to tell me your contextualization. So if we are, again, taking Tuckman, dissecting Tuckman, getting into all the different parts of what does it mean to have a successful team, I want to know how do you define team? 
What does that look like in your current situation? What does that look like in your future situation? Okay, that's what I want you to do. And it's going to be, it's a, I call it a quick and dirty. It is a one pager. You don't have to use any citations. I just want to know about you and how you're going to contextualize this. This is forced fun to get you to actually engage in that process to say, okay, so I can actually apply this in my own certain way into my context. Then we're going to have three case studies. Um, the case studies are going to be most of the time based on the work that you did the week before. So case study one is due at the beginning of week two, but it's really about all the stuff from forming. Um, and then like case study two is due week three, but it's really all the stuff from storming. There may be some cross pollination, but maybe probably not. I say that I've got the first one. I'm still looking for a good second and third one, but it'll be posted. Don't worry. And then your culminating activity is actually something that I, if I were you, would do throughout the uh, summer session that we have together, is you are going to actually build a team development plan. So after this class, how can you build and lead a team to success? So for each of these stages, forming, storming, norming, performing, and adjourning, what are specific things you can do? What are things that you need to look out for? What are some options? And so in this team development plan, you're going to have, it's going to be done by sections, but it's going to be almost like a, a field book or a user guide for yourself. So when we talk about forming and we talk about group member roles, you know, are you going to use Benagan sheets? Are you going to use a personality test? I mean, heck, you could use what BuzzFeed you know, on BuzzFeed, what Disney princess are you? Whatever you decide to use, um, you're going to actually talk through that. This is what I'm going to use. If you're going to use an instrument, then you're going to put it as an appendices in the back of that manual. It's actually really cool things for you to tangibly use. We talk about conflict and storming. You know, do you want to go through the conflict the traditional, you know, four phases of conflict, you know, the win-lose, lose-win, win-win, um, if you are a fan of The Office, then you know there's a fifth option where it's win-win-win with Michael Scott. Um, but what is it you're actually going to use? Which model are you going to go through? What articles do you want to have to help support that? Um, what TV clips do you want to use with your teammates if you so want to do that? So all the details and stuff are going to be posted on that, but just to kind of get you thinking through that. And that's not, it's due week 5.5, don't you love that? Um, because this semester is broken up so weird. But August 8th um, is the day that that is due. Um, so moving forward, if you take a look at Canvas, and again, I, I don't know how you access this video, but if you take a look at Canvas and you go to modules over there on the left-hand side, then that is how you're going to access the lectures, the PowerPoints, and the article per topic. And again, three topics per module, one module a week is kind of how this works. Um, I am available through email. Um, I technically am not on contract with Texas A&M University. Yay, budget cuts. Um, but if we need to have a face-to-face -face meeting, we can. Um, if you are at a distance, no worries. We can Zoom. Um, we, if you need me, you can find me. You know, find me uh, on the on the email, and then we can move forward from there. Um, either the email that's on the syllabus, or um, if you are actually in the college, it's they changed our emails, but they all go to the same place. And so either one of those work. Either Jennifer.Strong at ag.tamu.edu. I prefer the Dr.Jen at tamu.edu. Um, I seem to have less problems with that, but just let me know or email me through Canvas or whatever works for you. Um, I'm here to help. I'm here to facilitate your learning. That is why I'm here. Do not hesitate to reach out for good, for bad, for otherwise, um, and we'll go on this journey together. Thanks again for listening. Thanks for signing up, and we'll talk to you soon.